Today was a day of new roast and dark roast. This shot was from Robusta that I processed using sourdough bread or sourdough starter for 24 hours. And then I ended up double roasting it because the first time I roasted it, it was very underdeveloped. So I did it again because I figured I might as well mess it up rather than have a messed up under roast roast. Um, so it was quite dark, but not like bad bitter wise. Um, definitely better with milk, but I like it. I'm going to have it straight a few more times. Then I used another sourdough um, coffee that I did at the same time as the Robusta using um, Ethiopian and Guatemalan beans. And again, it, it I had to double roast it because the sourdough bread ones are hard to like stay in the mindset for roasting um, because I, I think I hear it's hard to hear the first crack and then they get a little brown. But again, this is like much darker than I normally would um, drink a coffee. Uh, but it was interesting because it doesn't have like the bad bitter taste that I don't like about dark roast, traditional dark roast, and which I think is part of the sourdough pressing. Then my wife wanted uh, an eggnog latte over ice. Um, so I used, um, five grams of, of roast that I just ended of a regular uh, Arabica and then, um, some Robusta, the sourdough Robusta. And, and it came out tasting like a milkshake with the, uh, it was the oat milk eggnog from Trader Joe's. Um, it's quite nice. Then I, I did a coffee roast where I did some, uh, used some uh, Colombian beans from leftover beans from Cup of Excellence that I, I was either given or stole from Chromatic Coffee. We shall never know. And um, so then I, I pulled out one more roast that I, I needed to use sooner rather than later. Uh, this was a, a lactic maceration um, that I went a little darker on. I, I The first crack took like five minutes to complete, which usually it takes like a minute and a half or two minutes on my roaster. Um, and so I, 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 I am using a little early. This is at six days after a humidity treatment rather than the usual seven days, but usually I go seven days plus a few more days of, of just, you know, letting it rest. Um, and it pulled out uh, really interesting. Like it was very even. Um, the shot pull was very even in terms of flow. I pulled out very center-wise. Uh, this was a 17% TDS at 19% extraction yield um, at a very low ratio. It's like a like almost a one-to-one. -one. Um, so then I thought I could, you know, based on how the shot time was like 70 seconds or so. So I was like, okay, let's let me dial this back a little bit. So I went a little bit coarser. I went from a, a setting zero to a setting five on the niche. And I had this shot, um, which, uh, so the time it took to cover the filter was closer to what, what I'm normally used to seeing, which is around like 10 to 20 seconds, whereas the previous shot was 33 seconds. Um, and then it covered very nicely and it was able to do the pause. So my profile has a steam pre-infusion, pre-infusion, and then a pause, and then a ramp back up where I typically do uh, pressure or pressure pulsing, but I removed it from the profile until I can get even through the pause. But usually the pause has issues because of the transient behavior of the water dispenser causing uh, channeling to the left side. And that's I, the pause just makes that worse. So anyways, this shot was ridiculous. So it was delicious. It was had a, a bitterness, but not like the uh, gross bitterness. And it was 22.66 is here, but the first reading was 22.7 uh, TDS which means the extraction yield on this shot was uh, just over 25%. Um, and the shot ratio was uh, like a, around a 1.1 output to input. So I want you to make note of that because that's ridiculously high. And I'm going to do it again tomorrow. So come back tomorrow for more.